the uh, Joe O'Reilly in place of uh, Minister Burton. First of all, I suppose I should get to agreement to the House. that agreed? Agreed. Yes, agreed. Deputy O'Reilly, you have 10 minutes. Yes. Uh, thank you, Last Con Corla. Uh, might I, at the outset, congratulate Minister Fitzgerald for bringing forward the, the wording for the referendum, the legislation, and very specifically the legislation on adoption. I want to congratulate the Minister for the speed with which she has achieved this, given the, uh, the drafting issues, etc. And it's good that we are at this point. Uh, I believe that this should be supported, and I do welcome, and I think sh we should acknowledge the fact that on all sides of the House, this is being uh, supported as worthy uh, as a worthy referendum uh, amend amendment to the Constitution and as pertinent and necessary at the moment. Uh, it will, it will uh, create a new standalone Article 42A and that will achieve a number of objectives. That will first of all establish the natural and imprescriptible rights of all children. It shall f uh, facilitate a situation where the state, uh, by proportionate means, can endeavour to supply the place, of, the place of the parents, and with due regard always to the natural and imprescriptible rights of the child. It uh, shall provide for the adoption of children, and the legislation is paralleling it, for the adoption of children whose parents have failed them for a per over a period of time and as prescribed by law. Um, uh, it, shall, the it shall provide for the views of the children to be taken into consideration, and that's critically important. So with, I think it's worth mentioning those salient points of the new proposed article at the outset. It's secondly, alas, Concorla, worth mentioning at the outset that that wording in no way threatens the position of the family uh, in the Constitution, uh, the primacy of the family as outlined in the Constitution. Rather, what it does is it accepts that primacy, that the special status of the family, but it parallel with that special status, it equally gives imprescriptible, unalienable, unremovable, if you like, rights to the child, and it puts those rights on a constitutional and on a statutory basis. And I think that's a critical point to make, that there is no conflict with the rights of the family. Uh, the family remains a center stage, a centerpiece in the Constitution. Uh, it's worth noting as we, that the need for this referendum uh, is underpinned uh, by a number of reports and a number of commissions down the years. It was first called for by Judge Catherine McGuinness on foot of the Kilkenny incest case. The need for a referendum is, is, vol is very, very obvious from the Ryan Commission report, the Kelly Fitzgerald case, the Klein report, and very, very uh, apparently and obviously from the Roscommon case. Uh, the Roscommon case is very recent. It's an appalling horror story. And that case, it was possible for the parents of what Minister Costello re just, just described before me as those unfortunate children. It was possible for those parents to go to court and to prevent the removal of the children from the family home, invoking the special status of the family. So, and while individual judges would look to the individual rights and would apply those to children, and there would be many cases of benign judgments by individual judges, and the potential in the Constitution already exists for that, we must copper fasten the position of children to the extent that there can be no case that through human error, through misinterpretation of the Constitution, 
uh, that the ch rights of children could be submerged, could be come, go into second place, go in, that the rights of children would have a secondary status. And I suppose a, the very eminent a judge O'Flaherty made the argument in a recent newspaper article that the Constitution in its present form allowed judges to make rulings that would support children. And while, yes, that may be the case, the possibility for alternative rulings, as demonstrated in the Roscommon case, is enough of a rationalisation, enough of a justification, enough of a reason for the amendment, for the constitutional amendment. If only the horror and the cruelty and the pain and the suffering of a few children as were to be the outcome of our not making this amendment, and as much more than a few, uh, then it would be justified. So I think that point merits making. Uh, of course, there's an interesting point that merits making as well, that this will actually support the family to the extent that will in underpin family support services. In other words, it will be a constitutional imperative because of the standing of children within the constitution for, f in, for positive interventions in support of the welfare of children to be made with families, be those interventions financial, professional assistance, etc. It will now mean, I had the privilege the other day of visiting the extern uh, services up at home in County Cavan, and they are a group under the auspices of the HSE who work with children with particular difficulties, uh, dysfunctional families, social problems, emotional difficulties, uh, children at great risk, and they work very effectively with those children. Well, the support, the, there will now be a constitutional imperative on this legislature to support people like Extern, to support people like Youthreach, to support uh, people, uh, to support families in difficulty. So rather than undermining the family, if you like, rather than taking children out of the family, the first owners will be to support within the family, support the family, and to create the ideal conditions there. And it is only when that whole effort breaks down and when there's a, a clear uh, threat to the well-being of the children that they would be removed. Just what, two minutes remaining. Yes, please. what merits mentioning in relation to this legislation as well, or to this constitutional amendment, is that it will provide an opportunity for adoption of children from married, from married couples, and I think that's a particularly important dimension. As the law stands now, in practice, while there may be a theoretical possibility of adoption, it would have to be established that the child's at risk until 18, and that they would remain permanently at risk. So it's well nigh impossible to have a child of a married couple, or a child, yes, of, from a from a, a child from a traditional home, to have that child adopted now, even though they're in continuous foster care. Now, the legislation will be couched in such a way as that it's obviously in the legislation that they will have to be out of the home and in continuous care for a minimum of three years. It's also in the legislation that they would have to be 18 months with the prospective family who proposed to adopt them. So the, all of those safeguards are built in on the norm, but it will now allow a situation where children ca from marriages can be adopted. And indeed, where a married couple can voluntary, uh, voluntarily, apart from state intervention, offer their child for adoption if they know that that's in the best interest of the child and that's uh, established by all, by uh, all the relevant authorities. So I think that's a very important dimension to the bill. Uh, to the amendment, rather. Uh, so I think, as the Minister said, as Minister Costello just said, I think it's imperative on all of us to back up the public support that we're giving this, uh, all of the parties, and that's to be welcomed and applauded and lauded, that for once the voices of children will be heard officially in this country and that they'll have a constitutional place for their voice, but that we back up that with an effective campaign over the coming weeks and we bring this to the people. It's very significant legislation in the light of the many areas 
where we have failed children in the past. Now, we've achieved enormous things with children as well, but that's not what we're here to discuss today. We have failed significantly as well. And it's in the light of those failures, it's now incumbent on us to redress those failures with an effective campaign beginning this afternoon.